Hello and welcome to AutoCAD 3D Lesson 3. Nice to see you again. Today we are going to draw a cabinet. We are going to start with a 2D drawing. The download link is the same in the command area. We are going to use plus pull command. We already learned that command in Lesson 1 and 2. Together we have two new commands. One is called revolve and the other is the loft command. Okay. So uh, let's take a look at the two new commands and then we are going to draw this cabinet. Okay. The lob command is in the drop down menu here. Okay. Take a look at the help from Autodesk. You can see all you need to do is draw the core section at different level and then select them one by one. The order is important and then it will create a 3D model for you. Just like this handle here. Okay? If you look at it, I have three one circle and two ellipses arranged in this order. You can see the top view and side view. Okay? So the command is real easy. So select the loft command, select the core section one by one. Okay? And then press enter, enter to finish. Good. So the key point is how to arrange the 2D9, etc. I'll show you in the cabinet exercise. Okay. Let's take a look at another command, revolve. The revolve command is in the same drop down list. Click here. First look at AutoCAD help. You see, you select the first curve, number one, and then select the axis of revolution, and it will create that model for you. By revolving the curve around the axis. So take a look at this paper cup here. You see, I draw the core section. Make sure you draw only half of it, just like me here not across the, the center line, okay? Just half of it. And then all you need to do is select the command revolve, okay? Select the cross section and then press enter and then pick two points for the axis of revolution. So first point and second point along the axis. And press spacebar for 360 degree default value. Okay, that's the revolve command. Okay, let's get back to our cabinet. So, first of all, I already opened the 2D joint here. You can see the front view, the top view, and side view. And the handle will be created by the lob command we just learned before. And the legs will be created by the revolve command. Okay? And the overall will be created by the purse pull command. First of all, again, I will click on the isometric view. Okay? And then conceptual. Okay? As always. Now look at this free view here. If I push through from the front view, you can see I cannot create the cabinet easily, especially the detail on the side. You can see here. And of course not the top view. But if you do it in the side view, you can see I can get all the detail by just doing the push through. Okay, so the first thing is you need to decide which view you are going to do the push pull command. So that's the side view. Okay, so let's do the push pull. Before that, again, I type the command di for distance. Okay, and I check the length of it. And it is 700, so 700 millimeter. Okay. Okay, now I zoom back here and then I will do the push pull command and select object or boundary. Make sure you click inside the boundary, not on the object. And always, when you use push pull command, don't click on the object. Okay, click on the boundary 
so click and then I want to do it multiple so I will select multiple and then this view here okay and then this view here okay and finally this view here okay so and um, press spacebar and then 700 okay so now you can see the overall shape of the cabinet is there next I will work on the legs first take a look at the legs here you can see this is a single line we cannot use it for revolve command we need to draw only half of it as said before so you have to draw a line in the middle okay okay and then trim it trim half of it okay so the trim command work this way first you type the command tr and then space bar twice one two okay and then you select the nine you want to remove okay just like that make sure you press space bar try will be real easy space bar to finish okay now take a look at this half of nine a single segment so it should be fine let's do the revolve so revolve and then i will select the curve here and then space bar and then I will pick two points along the line, along the axis. So first point and then click again, okay, and space bar to finish. So now we created the first select. Before we continue to create the rest, let's take a look at the property of the curve associated with the revolve object. If you move your mouse over the original curve and click on it, you will see entity groups. And then you will move your mouse over the entity group. Don't click on it and then move your mouse along the red axis which is the x axis now you click on it and move it you see it changed dynamically okay so that means they have association i press escape you can also move it along the y, y axis the green color one you see this okay escape but don't do it on the C axis. Why? Because if you do it, it will block the association. You can see the, the curve for the revolve command is a 2D curve. If you do it in the three dimensional C axis, it will become a 3D curve and cannot be used for the revolve command. Okay? So now, because this curve is related to the revolve command the object if you now move the object up AutoCAD will ask you do you want to also move the curve up okay take a look you see the leg is created on the edge of the cabinet and you look at the side view you see it should be inside the cabinet right so let's check the distance di spacebar from the end point here to the center okay and i can see from this here the x is 50 so i should move it up 50 so i will type the command move spacebar select the object i just select the 3D object not the curve and then spacebar and zero comma zero comma 50 okay and then space out once 
and AutoCAD will ask you to want to continue. I want to continue. I don't care about the association here. So I will continue. And then you should press spacebar one more time. Okay? Now it is move up. Now next I will do copy. Copy this leg here, spacebar. When you copy this object, if you click on the object itself, you cannot get the next reference point. Instead, you should just click on the 9 on the 2D. So you click this end point here. See? And the second point will be the corresponding end point. And spacebar to finish. Okay? Next, I will check the distance between the two legs. So DI, this is 600, okay? So all I need to do is copy, select the two legs, one, two, spacebar, zero, comma, zero, comma, 600, and spacebar twice, one, two, okay? So that's the legs. Now we are going to create the handle. First, I go back to top view. Either you click on the top here, or there's a command called plan, P-L-A-N. And then you just press space bar twice. One, two. It will give you back the top view much faster. Okay, okay now I zoom in. I will draw a ellipse first. Okay, so ellipse, center. And I will select here as the center, okay? And the edge will be here. And the other edge will be here, okay? And then I will draw a circle in the middle. So I will click on the circle. I will use two point circle, okay? And then and then I click the top midpoint and then the lower midpoint. Okay? And I will type the command MI from viewer. And I will select the ellipse. Okay? And then spacebar. And then click on the center and move my mouse up and spacebar to finish. Okay? Now, let's go back to the isometric view. If you just click isometric, AutoCAD will give you the whole thing. So you still have to zoom in. It takes some time. I undo first. Instead, you select the related object. Just some of the object, it really doesn't matter. Just like that. And then if you click again, it will only zoom in to that particular area so much faster. Okay. Now I need to rotate this circle. So BD rotate command and select the circle. Click and spacebar and I will click on the green circle and 90 spacebar to finish. Okay. Next I need to move this circle up. For how much? I will check from the side view here. With the distance command DI from the edge here to the midpoint of this. How to get the midpoint of these two points? There's a quick way. First, you hold the shift and white mouse button. Okay? And AutoCAD will give you this context menu. Shift, white mouse button. And then you select mid between two pawns. And now you pick the first pawn and the second pawn. Then it will give you the mid pawn and tell you the distance is 22.5. Okay? So that means I need to move this circle up 22.5. Okay? So I will type the move command. Because I selected the circle before so I will just type P for previous selection set to save me time to select the circle again okay and space bar one more 
and type in the distance. 0, 0, 22.5 space bar twice. 1, 2. Okay? Next, I will select the loft command. So loft, select the ellipse, circle, and the other ellipse. Okay? Space bar to finish two times. Okay? Then I will make copy of this. So I copy CO command. L for the last object created. That means the, the loft object. And spacebar. And I can see the distance between the two will be just midpoint to midpoint. So I will pick the midpoint and then the corresponding midpoint here. Okay? Spacebar to finish. Good. Next, I orbit around to the side. Okay. Then I will rotate the two handles and put it on the cabinet. To do that, 3D rotate, select the two handles, space bar. Before I click on the green circle for rotation, I click on the lower left corner to define the base point of rotation first. And then I will click on the green axis. Okay? And I type in minus 90 for 90 degree up. Now you see it is rotating up. Next, I will move previous selection set. Okay? Space bar. From where to where? From the base point here to the corresponding corner here. Good. So almost all done. Next I'm going to rotate the cabinet. To do that I select one solid object and the revolve surface and right click select similar. It will select all these 3D objects for me. Okay. And then I will just click on the 3D rotate and the red axis. Okay. And 90. Good. Next, I want to hide all these 2D9. To do that, I right click, select isolate, and then isolate, isolate, isolate. And type P for previous selection set. So all these three the object. Space bar, space bar. Okay. Next, I will give it some background. So first, I will right click on the navigation view clip and select perspective. Okay. And change the perspective from 50 to, for example, 25. And then I will go to visualize, render, render environment and exposure. Turn on the environment. For example, I will select the parser. Okay. And then I just orbit around. Okay. And I will change it from conceptual to realistic. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.